Okay. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Okay, so, so welcome to the academic talk for the economics program. Okay, so I understand that you're very excited about today's pro my the economics uh, talk, but let's quieten down a bit so that we can finish it up. Okay, so this will be your last last talk for today and also be the last talk before you start your your semester next week. Okay, so I think if I'm not wrong, your first class for economics will be on 9.30 a.m. On, on Monday. So hopefully all of you can wake up early. And I also have to wake up very early on, on the day as well. Okay. Okay, so today's talk. Okay, so, so let's quieten down a bit. Okay, so today, okay, we what we'll be doing is to be giving you a I'll be giving you a short okay, um, introduction to what your life at uh, in the economics program is going to be like. Okay, what kind of courses you're going to be taking. Okay, and a, a bit of okay, what you may be doing after you move on to your uh, career, after you finish your uh, undergraduate degree. Okay. okay so, so welcome to uh, the academic year of 2023. Okay, so, so I think I'll just uh, skip this. Okay, so just, just to share, okay, I'm also from NTU as well. So I was in the economics and mathematics program. Okay, so not exactly the economics program, but okay, I've also done similar courses to you and so many of the professors who, who are teaching you today, some of them taught me as well. Okay, so, so that's an interesting situation to be in. Okay, so, so, so even though I'm from maths and econs, okay, I, I feel that the econs part of the maths and econs program is definitely one of the more important portions because it's the is the one that, that sort of made it more applicable to a wide, wide dimension of uh, fields as well. Okay, so I think uh, Prof. Tathau there is also from the uh, Math and Econs program, so he was, I think, one or two years after me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so there are many different paths that you can take as an economics graduate. Okay, okay but, but for me, okay, what I did was I, I chose to further my, my degree and then pursue research. Okay, but, but as we'll see, okay, there, are, there are many things you can do. Okay, so, so in, in the market, okay, a lot of jobs okay, will, be, will require some training in economics, okay, but there are even more jobs that do not require this training. Okay, so if you, okay, I, I think you can't really, let's see whether I can zoom in. Okay, no, I can't zoom in. Okay, never mind. Okay, so, so amongst your, your uh, seniors who have graduated from the program, okay, a lot of them go into like finance, okay, which are the finance and public, uh, the civil service, which are the top two. Okay, but, but so those are the, the, the jobs that may require okay, these economic skills to some extent. Okay, but there are also many other skills like uh, information, infocoms, okay, and engineering, and, and retail trade, and, and like insurance companies, which do, do not really require your economic skills per se. Okay, but, okay. Okay, but so, so in general, okay, what employers are going to be looking for is for workers who are sort of going to be smart and hardworking and can also make use of more general skills okay, that are transferable across different environments. Okay, and, and we, in the economics program, we're going to be teaching you skills that, that are, are going to be these general skills. Okay, not just the economic skills per se, okay, but also many general skills. Okay, so some specific skills okay, which are uh, economics related okay, are, are those related to these economic concepts. Okay, so you'll be learning things like uh, weighing costs and benefits, okay, looking at things like demand and supply, which you should be familiar if you've done economics before. Okay, and then I think not many of you may know about this, but you can also look at strategic thinking via game theory. Okay, and then, and then overall, okay, for these economics, okay, there's an aim to sort of improve welfare, okay, social welfare by improving efficiency, okay, and, and say also help aiding in cooperation amongst people as well. Okay, so these are different things that uh, economics, uh, the economics profession is concerned with. Okay, and of course, okay, as an economist, you also have knowledge about how the economy works, right? Okay, so, so these are the more specific skills that you gain okay, from, your, your, from the courses that you'll be taking at NTU. Okay, but you'll also be learning okay, some technical skills as well. Okay, so you'll be doing some ma mathematics courses, okay, some courses on causal inference, which is sort of understanding uh, cause and effect. So what, how does one policy okay, have an effect on, on, on the economy, for example? So you're, you're trying to find the causal effects of these uh, economic policies. Okay, and this will be utilizing Okay, your econometrics and statistical skills that you learn okay, throughout the, uh, uh, your undergraduate uh, degree. Okay. So in terms of the general skills, okay, okay, what we like to think is that economists are more logical and analytical in their, their thinking. Okay, and, and by learning all these ways of thinking mathematically and theoretically, okay, you have a more 
clear idea of how to model different scenarios in your mind okay, and think about different scenarios so that you do not come into uh, uh, interpreting things at face value. So often one, one problem people face if they, don't, if, if they are not uh, familiar with economics is that they, they tend to mix uh, correlation with causation, for example, if you've heard about that. Okay, so some things may be correlated with each other, okay, but it may, may not mean that one thing causes another thing. Okay? Okay, and, and as an economist, okay, usually you'll be relatively strong at numbers, okay, so you might not be a, the, the best mathematician there, okay, but you'll be relatively good at interpreting numbers compared to peers in, in other fields. Okay? Okay, and, and one thing that's also important for an economist is that you, you need to be able to communicate your ideas okay, and evidence about different, uh, about different policies or different uh, objectives that you have okay, in, in a way that's clear and concise to others. Okay? So these are these general skills that we, we seek to, to sort of uh, educate okay, our, our students with. Okay? So, so in our economics program, okay, what we'll be emphasizing okay, is a solid foundation in, in three different fields first. Okay? So there'll be mi uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics and economic theories, econometric theories. Okay, so these are the three basic cores that, you, that we'll be in, endowing you with okay, at, the, at your beginning of the course. Okay, and then subsequently after you have, you have this solid foundation, okay, we'll be trying to educate you in various specializations. Okay, so for economics in, and at TU, okay, we focus more on applied economics. Okay, so we, we want to give you more practical training in these econometric and quantitative skills okay, which you can actually use in the workplace. And also in, in NTU, also we have this compulsory internship, okay, which also seeks to provide you with some practical experience okay, at the workplace okay, and for you to apply your skills and okay, see how, how you can use your skills that you learn at, 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 uh, in school okay, to things at the workplace. And also, because it's sort of in the middle of your, your, uh, your undergraduate degree, okay, once you do your internship, maybe you can find areas which you lack okay, and then also see what you're interested in and then take further courses which you are interested in in, that, in those areas. Okay, so these are some benefits that, okay, that our program has. Okay, so just to give you some, uh, a broad summary okay, of what your course will be like. Okay, so I assume most of you uh, will be doing economics. So how many of you are double majors in, in here? Okay so, okay, so a few of you here. So this, this program description here is mostly for the econs and econs and business. Okay, but the, I'll also be touching on Okay, a bit for the double majors as well. Okay, but the program for the econ side is roughly similar in terms of the, the core courses. Okay. So so all of you have to start off with this uh, basics okay, of maths, okay, mathematics for economists and property and statistics. Okay, because okay, uh, part of economics is, is learning how to think about things in a mathematical way. Okay, and, and because of that you need to learn at least some background in that. Okay, so so don't worry for those who, who are a bit afraid of maths. Okay, this is this this course here is supposed to educate you and, and and keep you um, uh, up to date okay, with all these uh, skills that you need okay, for all your subsequent courses. Okay? So I would say try and uh, pay attention to these courses so that you, you cause, because it has some spillover effects okay, on, on, your, on your learning okay, in future courses as well. Okay? Okay, after, okay, so sort of simultaneously, okay, while, while doing these two introductory courses, okay, you will also be doing your core, core level one courses. Okay? So all of you will be doing these uh, microeconomics level one, macro level one, okay, at the same time as when you're doing okay, these uh, mathematics and cons and property and stats. Okay? Okay, so after you've completed uh, your level one course, then you can then move on to your level, level two course and level three course. Okay, so they are all pre prerequisites for each other. So try not to, so, so try not to, to, to fail it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you fail it, then you have to retake it, right? So if you re if you have to retake a course, then you might not be able to uh, graduate in time because you need to take. Uh, so so the other courses need the, the prerequisites like micro two or micro and macro two. Okay, for for so that you I mean there are sort of requirements for you to to do other courses. Okay, so if you it can have a sort of a delaying effect if you do not pass these courses. Okay, so so please pay attention to what your your course coordinators tell you about, about the courses and the requirements. Okay, so, so I think most of them will, will have some criteria about attending attendance and, and, and going for the test. So if you miss the test, okay, don't, you, if you miss the test and the makeup, you, you might not be liable to pass the course. Okay, okay so, so do keep that in mind. Okay, so after you finish uh, this course, okay, then you'll be moving on to the few courses. Okay, so most, after you finish the level two course, Okay, mostly you'll be able to 
start taking some of these field courses already. Okay, so they are level three courses. Okay, so these will be more specialized fields like uh, money and banking, financial economics, development economics, okay, applied uh, economics, okay, and Chinese economy, etc. Okay, and I think there's like urban economics as well. So these are more applied fields which will deal with some things that you're interested in. Okay, so so usually at this after taking all your the aim of these uh, core courses is also to educate you about these general fields that are in economics so that you can make a more informed choice about what you want to do in, in the subsequent few courses as well. Okay. Okay, and finally, okay, we have the highest level courses, which are the applied courses, which we seek to teach you okay, specialized skills okay, in, uh, which are based on econometrics, for example. Okay, so there are things like time series analysis, panel data and policy analysis, okay, machine learning, and data analysis, okay, and additional things like behavioral economics, okay, experimental economics, which deals with how to use experiments to analyze people's behavior, okay, and also like cost-benefit analysis. Okay, so all these different applied courses okay, teach you specialized methods okay, that will be relevant for in, in various fields okay, in, in, your, in the workplace. Okay? okay, so any questions at this point about these courses? Okay, so we also have a Q&A at the end, so please, uh, you can feel free to uh, ask at the end as well. Okay, so, so in terms of the econs program, okay, I'm not sure if how, whether they've uh, educated about you in these previous talks already, but okay, basically you have these academic units. Okay? Okay, so you have a total of uh, 125 acad academic units that you need to fulfill. Okay, and, and these are split into three different categories. Okay? So the categories are your major requirements, okay, which are sort of the compulsory things which are part of your major, okay, and this interdisciplinary co collaborative core, which are more of the interdisciplinary modules. Okay, and there's, there's this broadening and deepening electives, which are things that you can sort of have the freedom to choose. Okay, so they're called deepening because you can choose to take more econs modules, or you can choose to take other things outside economics. So, they, so that's, a, that's the broadening aspect. Okay. So um, in your major requirements, okay, you have 27 core courses, which are the micro, micro, macro, econometrics, and all the statistics, for example. Okay, and then you also have okay, other prescribed electives okay, and your graduation project they have to do. Okay, so later I'll give you more details about this uh, graduation project. Okay, so this is the, the structure for the econs program. Okay, if you're in the econs and business program, it's, it's roughly the same. Okay, just that you have more AUs to, to finish. Okay, a bit more, only 10, 10 AUs more. Okay. So, so the major difference for the Econs and Business program is that okay, you, you need to use your broadening and deepening electives okay, for the business side of your, your, your program. Okay? So if you see here, okay, you have 30, okay, here you have, um, you have 30 AUs for, for, to freely choose, right? Okay, for the business program, you need 10. Okay, you need to do 30 for, for business. And, and the same goes for the double major programs in general. Okay? So for the double major programs, you need to do whatever is your, the econs major, as well as the second major, which is either uh, psychology, public policy, and global affairs, or media analytics. Okay? Okay, so there, there's sort of equal weightage between these two. Okay, and then you need to do uh, the interdisciplinary electives, which is your uh, internship, okay, as well as your uh, graduation project as well. Okay? Okay, and if you see here the broadening deeply analysis, you actually get less as well. Okay. Okay, so sorry, the intensity electives is just uh, electives which are in the, it's not the graduation project. The graduation project is under in the ICC. Okay. Okay, so these are the ones that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so all these courses okay, are the three pillars of economics. Okay, that will be that will be you'll be taking over these next three semesters. Okay, so you'll be mostly looking at this in the next few semesters. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for the major prescribed electives, okay, part of it is uh, property and statistics. So I probably and statistics. So I think the reason why they classify it is this because it's done by the the SPMS instead of our school. So they just classify it as a different uh, uh, course uh, electives. Okay, and then you have to choose okay, six courses from level three okay, and three courses from level four. Okay, so this is for the economics major program. Okay, for, for the other majors, okay, you, have, you probably have less, less 
choice in doing this because you have to do a, a second major as well. Okay. Okay, some additional things that you will be required to do. Okay, for uh, for your majors is is an internship program. Okay, so the internship program will take up some AUs from your ICC, which is your interdisciplinary collaborative core. Okay, so you can choose to do two different kinds of internships. Okay, so the internship is compulsory, okay, but you have a choice of what you want to do. Okay, so you can do the summer internship, which is 10 weeks, okay, which is during summer, okay, for, and this will take up five AUs. Okay, the, you can, or you can also choose to take one whole semester okay, uh, of, of an internship. Okay, so if you take one whole semester of internship, that means you need to make up for these courses okay, in, in the other semesters. Okay, so you have a slightly heavier load okay, in, in other semesters. Okay, but, but you also get a more, more reward out of this, uh, not more, more AUs okay, that you earn from, from this longer internship. Okay, so five of them will come from your ICC again, okay, but seven of them from your broadening and deepening electives. Okay, so you need to sacrifice some of your broadening and deepening electives for, for doing this longer internship program. Okay, and this internship program is around 24 weeks, okay, and there are two, two different periods in which you can do them. Okay, one is from July to January, and then January to June. Okay, so this coincides with the two semesters of, of NTU as well. Okay. Okay, so finally, okay, one other requirement that you that for most students okay, is the graduation project. Okay, so so if you if you know by now, okay, there should be when you do your your courses, okay, you get grades from these courses, right? Okay, so your courses, your grades from these courses will will translate into your GPA. Okay, so for example, if you get an A, it'll be worth five points. If you get a A, a minus, it'll be 4.5 points. And then I think B plus is four points and, and so on. Okay, so these, these averages will be weighted by your, the number of AUs of each course. Okay, and then it will translate into your cumulative GPA. Okay, so this cumulative GPA determines at the end of your program, okay, whether you get a, on, a first class honors, second, second upper, or second lower, and also, at intermediate stages, it also translates into whether you qualify for certain, certain things. Okay, so, so for the graduation project, okay, you require a CGPA of uh, 3.9 and above. So this is, so anyone with uh, honours, okay, will uh, second upper and above, okay, will, I mean potentially who potentially can get a second upper and above needs to do this graduation project. Okay, so this graduation project will be in groups of three. Okay, so you it is compulsory to be in groups of three. Okay, and then you do. Uh, a project under a supervisor, a faculty member, okay, for one year, and then you submit a, a essay at the end of this, and it is one year, okay. So if you don't do the graduation project because maybe you don't meet the C, the GPA requirements, then you have to do uh, either two K okay, level four courses or three level three courses, okay, to to make up for this uh, AUs for the graduation project, which I think is around eight or nine A, AUs. Okay, so, so this is just a general schedule of what will be your general, uh, your, your plan for your studies okay, over these next four years. Okay, so, okay, so, so as you can see here, these are your core courses, okay, your maths, your micro one, micro two. Okay, and these are sort of your interdisciplinary collaborative course. Okay, and then you, maybe you can choose something that you want. Okay, so notice that this is, this is not fixed. You can decide partly what you want to do, but I think by now you, you should have already decided already, right? So I, so during these next two weeks, I think you have the possibility of adding and dropping certain courses. Okay, so so do 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 uh, do it carefully because it, it might okay, feed into. So certain courses are more popular than other courses. So I think uh, at the end of your two or two or three years, you will know that you need to click click very fast uh, on the computer to to get the courses that you want. Okay, but for the core courses, usually you'll be allocated it directly, so you don't need to worry about that. So, but one thing that you might need to worry about is whether you get a slot that you, the tutorial slot that you like, because there are multiple uh, tutorial slots as well. Okay, so, so SEM1 is the level one course, SEM2 is the level two course, and then uh, year two SEM1 will be your level three, micro three and macro three. Okay, and then this, this will be your econometrics modules. You'll start doing your econometrics modules in SEM1 and SEM2 here. Okay. Okay, after that, okay, in year three and year four, okay, you'll mostly be all the free electives that you can, can start choosing already. Okay. 
Okay, and your uh, the graduation pro project is also known as the final year project. Okay, which is called the F FYP. Okay, then you'll be usually be spending the your final year doing this this FYP. Okay, and so so for those who who like to relax more, you can do more of this in, in the earlier parts. Then you can relax in your final year. So it's up to you to 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 plan ahead. Okay. Okay, but, but, but do, do it within your means. Okay, don't try and stress yourself too much. Okay. Okay, for ECBU, it's also the same. Okay, if, you, if you see the course, they're all in the same location as before. Okay, it's just that you need to do more uh, of your second major broadening and deepening electives at the beginning. Okay, so these are, you can treat this as sort of your, your... It's sort of similar to the double major where you have a second, second major in business which you need to, to do the, the core modules for as well. Okay. Okay, any questions about this so far? No. Nope. Okay, so, so for the double major program, I didn't list anything here, but it's also the same. Okay, just to replace this, this portion. I think you replace some of these portions here with the, uh, the, the second major, the, the other double major, the other major that you're doing. Okay, not, not second major, because second major is a different thing. Okay? okay, so you replace it with the other major that you're doing, and you'll be doing Cause in, in these early portions as well. Okay. Okay, so, so now I'll be talking about the additional things that you can do to top, to add on to your degree. Okay, so for those who are doing this, so this is especially relevant for those in the economics, just the pure economics program, because you have more broadening and deepening electives to, to work with. Okay, so you can basically choose to do a second major, okay, with the additional broadening and deepening electives that you have. Okay, so so this second major will come from any department within the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Okay, and, <clears throat> and it requires you to have a, at least a CGPA of uh, 4.0 at the end of the first year. Okay, so once you have this, if you meet this qualification, they'll, they'll automatically send you our email at the end of your first year to ask you whether you want to register for a second major. Okay, so this second major is different from the double major because Okay, a second major is, is less, less AUs than, uh, than, a, the, a double, than the, the other major in a double major. Okay, <clears throat> okay so the, another option is, is, is to do a minor. Okay, so you can do a minor not, not just within, your, your, uh, within courses in the School of Social Sciences or the School of Humanities. Okay, you can also do a minor in, in other schools as well. For example, in maths or engineering or, science, or the other sciences. Okay. So, so a minor requires you to do at least five courses, I think, 15 AUs okay, in, in that particular field. Okay, then you'll be awarded a minor in that. Okay, so for the economics program, okay, you can also do a, a specialization. Okay, so a specialization is, is, based, is, is a certificate that you'll receive at the end of your, your, your degree. Okay, if, you, if you complete okay, a particular set of courses, Okay, within these specific fields. Okay, so if you go to the website, you will see that in each of these three fields, okay, there will be specific courses that you can take. Okay, and if you meet these, uh, the three compulsory courses and the five electives that are listed in the, the three different areas, okay, then you'll be awarded a spe specialization in each of these fields. Okay, so this is to help you to signal to employers that, hey, I, I, I've been doing courses that, that sort of uh, uh, make me specialize in this specific field. Okay? Okay, so if I'm not wrong, okay, is for those who are doing a uh, double major, uh, let me think, for those doing a double, you might still be able to do this specialization, but it, it might just be uh, just enough. Okay, for, for double major, you can, with this, that means you need to con use this entire 19 AUs, in, in your pursuit of this specialization. So once, once you do your specialization, you basically can't do anything else already. Okay? Okay, so but if you're like in economics and data science, which I don't think anyone is here, if you're in economics and data science, I don't think there's enough AUs for you to, to do it. Okay? Okay, so finally, okay, I'm going to talk about some other opportunity, opportunities that you have, okay, besides the, the main core courses that we had uh, described earlier. Okay, so, so one of it is uh, uh, called the Eureka program. Okay, so this is the undergraduate research experience on campus program. Okay, so Eureka. 
Okay, and it's also the eligibility for this is also based on your GPA. Okay, and it also be at the end of after the, you finish year one. Okay, those who are eligible for it will be invited to register for 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 this program. Okay, so what this program is is that okay you can you can choose to do a, a research project under any any faculty member who who has, has sort of posted some uh, some projects that he's he's interested in having some help with. Okay, and and it's basically an 11 months research experience, uh, okay, which is, and it will take up around four AUs. Okay, so you can do it twice, okay, once in year two and once in year three. Okay, so, <laughs> they, they like this program a lot. Okay, so, okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so it will be 11 months research experience. So, at the, so for those who are very interested in research, okay, Okay, you can. Uh, you need to make sure that you qualify for it first. Okay, and then after that you can take this this uh, undertake this slightly longer program. Okay, but then I think if you are very interested in research and, and want to save further your degree in, in future, it'll be very useful for you. Okay. Okay, and another useful thing is that if you do it in years two and three, you can actually uh, move on to using it for your final year project. Okay, but but I think this is only as a solo. You'll be doing it alone. Okay, not as a as a group. Okay. Okay, and one last thing okay, is the exchange program. Okay, so you can choose to go on your exchange program. I think probably in years two, three, and two and three probably because in the last year you have to do your final year project. Okay, so most I think you can still go in your final year, but you need to do some arrangements with your your supervisor, for example. Okay, so for years, so a lot of so for me, I went during year. Year, year two, uh, end of year two or <laughs> beginning of year three, somewhere there. Okay, so but but in general, okay, from my experience, okay, it depends a lot on, so, so people with higher grades tend to have the priority in going to certain areas. Okay, so so for like top schools, okay, which are very popular, they they'll just go by your your GPA as well. Okay, so so different schools will have different numbers of slots. So. so and you also need to compete for these slots with other people from other schools as well. Okay, so but in general you can take courses okay, from overseas and then transfer it back to, to NTU. Okay, you need to match them to specific courses at in, in NTU and then you can use them to fulfill your AU requirements. Okay? So so that's the final opportunity that you have. I I think I didn't miss anything really. Okay, so so just to end off, okay, we'll have some uh, advice from from uh, one of my one of your seniors and also one of my past students as well, uh, who just graduated. Yeah. So hi everyone. Uh, let me open up my slides. So actually, I, my name is Jun Yu. I just graduated this year. So I attended my convo like two weeks ago. And uh, Prof. Jota asked me here to share some of my experience with you. Then if you guys have any questions along the way, you can feel free to ask me. Because uh, I'm from a, like a student perspective as well. So, so a little bit of introduction about me. I'm from double major, Econs and Psych. So is there anyone from Econs and Psych? OK, you guys are in for a treat. Because the program is really excellent. I did. So from the start, I wanted to do postgrad. So I did Eureka for two years. So one year under Prof. Jonathan Tan, then the second year under Prof. Jonathan Do. So I went for the semester change at HKU. So, so semester change is really enlightening. So if you guys have the chance, right, I think it's a must go kind of thing. Um, during my year, uh, they allow us to do two FIPs. So I did both FIP uh, for Econs and for both Econs and Psych. And FIP is honestly very interesting. You learn quite a bit of stuff. Then I also participated in some various research assistantship. And so right now my future plan is um, I have been accepted into uh, Oxford for the Masters of Econs program. So I'm quite fortunate enough. Mm. So if you guys uh, have any aspirations for postgrad, right, you can ask me also about it. I can let you all know about the application process and everything. Um, so far, got any questions? 
you can feel free to ask me anything, like uh, what course to take or what's my favorite course, that kind. It's like your only chance to get a no from a senior. Oh no, I have some other stuff. So, so we, maybe we let he finish his uh, sharing first, then after that we, oh. we, have a, we open the Q&A to everyone, okay? So I provide some stuff that I think is the best thing about the NTU Econs Department. So I think the first thing right, is the administration of the courses. So what I feel is that most of my friends, and me included, we get to take whatever course that we want. So I don't think that anyone actually didn't get a course that they want. So even if you didn't get it during ad drop, right, there's a appeal form also for you to appeal. And normally the appeal goes through. And the second thing is that there's a diverse set of courses. Uh. So if you want to go into finance, you can go into take courses that are more related to finance. And if you want to go into like uh, policy making, there's a lot of courses for policy making as well. And I think one thing that NTU professors really like is behavior cons. So if I'm going to research for behavior cons, then really just go and take behavior cons mods. The last thing that I like about NTU Econs right, is that I think the professors here are actually like very world class. A lot of them are leading professors in their field, and you get to know, you get to learn a lot from them. Really, some of them, a few of them, are actually like uh, celebrities back in their home country, like that. Like when they make an opinion on social media, then a lot of people follow them and and get excited about their opinions about economics, lah. Yeah. So I think it's quite interesting. So my advice is, I guess, feel free to get to know the pros. Don't be afraid to initiate conversation. Yeah. And if you want to, let's say, RA under a prof, or you want to get to know a prof better, you can always initiate cold emails to them, or find them after lecture. Go to lectures. Don't don't skip lectures. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all from me. I did my SEM exchange in year three SEM two because year two was COVID year, yeah. So a lot of us didn't manage to go out. Then so I pushed it to year three SEM two, and I thought at that time they keep talking about the Hong Kong Singapore travel bubble, which didn't really happen. But I still managed to go. Yeah, it's very fun. If y'all have a chance, really, uh, it's the highlight of uni, lah. Yeah. So a lot of people they spend. 10 to 15k as a message change. So I asked them, do you think it's worth it? And not a single person has told me it's not worth it. Yeah. Any other questions? I think it really depends on what you want in your student life. So if the benefit of going year two, right, is that you get to clear mods there. So, so do you all know that uh, when you go exchange, the mods that transfer back are pass fail. So it doesn't affect your GPA. I'm sure most of you all know. So if you go during year two, then you get to clear more 3K mods. They might not be as hard as the 4K. Because 4K mods are harder to score, then it might affect your GPA. So if you go in year three, you can pass fail more 4K mods, yeah. Uh, but one thing I want to tell you all, right, is that no one has ever told me this when I was an undergrad, is that if you want to apply for a postgrad, they will look at your semester exchange results also. Yeah, so when I was in Hong Kong, I played too much. Then my grades were, were not very good. So luckily, I still got accepted, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. 
I guess that's a question for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess it's actually personal choice, right? So if you want to signal that you're specialized then and go to a very specific field and you already know what you want to do, then, then I would say just go for it. Okay, if you really want to go into finance, do a finance specialization, right? But then if you, if you aren't really sure what you want to do and you just want to have a broad, broad view of what, what is there to learn, okay, then, then doing a, a variety of courses will be, will be more beneficial to you as well. Okay, yeah, so, so I guess the, the thing is if you specialize, you have to go very deep into it and then I, sometimes the higher courses will be more difficult, right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe for some of you, getting high grades is one of your priorities. Okay, but, but I would say if you want the knowledge, just go, go for the, uh, the courses itself. Any other questions? Um, so, during my year, there was only five ECPS students. Then I think all of us went different direction. For me, I'm more interested in behavioral cons. So I took most of the stuff that is related to behavioral cons. I think lab in social side is very fun. You have to do your own research project. So basically, it's kind of like a mini FIP. I learn a lot from lab in social side. For econs wise, mm, I think quite an essential econs mod, right? To me, even though it wasn't related to psych, it's money and banking. Because money and banking, I really learned how the economy works. So like, they teach you what is what do what do banks do, what do insurance uh, companies do, and. I feel like if you don't know that, you cannot really call yourself an econ student. Like imagine you tell people you're an econ student, then other people ask you, what do banks do, then you don't know. And I feel very paisay. <laughs> so money and banking, I think, is quite essential. Uh, a mod that I hear very good things about, but I didn't manage to take, is empirical strategy and program evaluation. I think by Prof. Yen Jubo. The stuff that he teaches, how how to really uh, evaluate the, the, your empirical strategy and uh, really do research in the proper way, kind of, yeah. Can, can feel free to ask me any questions about anything, really, yeah. So the the plan is that you can either take a one FIP or two four K mods, right? So honestly, I feel like the workload of FIP is less than the workload of two four K mods. Yeah, because the FIP is split throughout the year, and if given a chance, you can start a little so. So at the end of year three sem year year three sem one you can already start looking for professors. So once you start looking for professors, you can start to develop your research project. So it might take even longer than one year. It might take one and a half. It depends on your, uh, what's your goal. Uh. If you want to ch chong it in a one year, then you can do it one year. But if you want to place yourself, you can start looking for professors to talk about your research topic at the end of year three, sem two, or even earlier, yeah. There's a question behind, right? So co-curricular wise, do yeah, I have a slide here somewhere? So I think year one I played quite a bit. Then I joined Hall Council. Anyone in Hall 5? Nice. So I joined Hall Council. Then I joined sports 
and I was a sports secretary then I played a lot of sports so I think in year one I come to school just to play sports <laughs> but I did, uh, yeah I think I play sports more than I study then I also quite interested in research so I joined NTU research talk as Hongen so honestly as a NTU student you can you can also you can participate in co-curriculars at the same time and you can achieve good grades uh, at the same time yeah so it's it's not a it's not hard to do yeah It is, if you are interested in research or postgrad, do Eureka, because Eureka is, Eureka is past fail, and I think the workload is relatively chill. So you can clear four AUs each Eureka, but if you're not interested in research, I hear from my friends that there's a gym, gym mod. <laughs> so basically, your grade depends on how heavy you can lift, or something like that. There's a lot of very weird BDEs la. Yeah. I tried to apply to a singing singing BDE. So before that there was a audition. So it was an audition in front of the whole class. And it was the, the BDE is literally called the voice. <laughs> so I went up, then I say, Oh today I'm gonna sing this song. And before I finished singing it, the prof stopped me. <laughs> he said, try next time. Yeah, then I just but really just take what you want to learn. Oh. Really, uh, uni is an experience for you to try new things. A lot of people take language mods also. Um, depends on whether you want to use the PDE to improve your grade or you just want to try new stuff. Mm. So, what were my considerations before doing postgrad? Mm, I think at, I always wanted to do postgrad since the start of my uni journey because I really enjoy cons quite a lot. I remember in the first micro micro one, I learned about all the consumer behavior. And I was like, whoa! Like, I don't know who did this or what drugs is on, but it was like. Very interesting. So after that, I just really wanted to explore the area in more detail. Uh, I guess I, I just really like cons a lot. Mm. But postgrad is not a common, not very common for students. I think. Yeah, most people want to go into industry or government after. So I think that you're, you'll not be the only one who will be in that situation. There are probably going to be others as well. So, so the reason why we do all these core courses is because, because we want students to be on the same level before they do all these few courses, which are the more important ones okay, that you'll be applying to your career, right? Okay, so, so I think as long as you put in the effort to do the core courses well, okay, you're not going to be far behind because everybody's, everybody's going to study the same thing, right? So if you pay attention and then... Uh, uh, do do well in those courses. You you definitely be on the same. Level. Okay. So so thanks everyone for coming to today's uh uh briefing. Okay.